mentioned that we might be playing some games tonight. Mm -hmm. Do you still want to play games? Yeah, I want to play games tonight, man. Let's talk about the film, It's What's Inside. This is a movie I got the chance to see at Sundance a couple of months ago, and I really loved it, and I just been wanting to talk about the ending and all of the plot twists and turns here and there. So this is, of course, spoiler full. I do have a spoiler-free video if you want to go check out that review right now up on the channel. This is the film from Greg Jordan in which you have a group of friends switch bodies, and that's all I'll say about it right now. So I'm about to get into spoilers spoilers for the film so I really implore you check out the spoiler free review before or just watch the movie and then come back to this video so we can discuss some of the craziness that happens but I'm telling you this is a very fun and hypnotic film but let's get into it so Basically what we follow here is this group of friends are getting together to sort of give a send off to their friend Ruben who is getting married. Now the group of friends consist of Shelby and Cyrus who are a couple and they're dealing with their own things as well. They're not having as much intimacy as they would want to and they're not too entirely sure where the relationship is going. You then have Dennis who is sort of seen as a fuck up of sorts and somebody who just lives off their parents trust fund. Then you have Maya and Brooke who are trying to get their life together figure out what's their next steps as well. Nikki is maybe seen as the most like put together one. She is an online influencer and she has millions of fans all around. And Ruben, of course, is the one getting married. Now, Forbes is a character that comes into the picture a bit later after the friends get to the house. And Forbes was a wild card because people weren't entirely sure how Forbes felt because there had been a whole dilemma with Forbes years prior when they were all in college where Forbes got expelled from the college because he had brought his younger sister Beatrice to a party where she got drunk and of course being underage no 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 that's not a good thing right so Forbes got pretty much expelled and in trouble for that. Now the thing was that Beatrice apparently was with Dennis and this caused a lot of problem because at that point Dennis was with Nikki and it was just a big convoluted drama filled like time right so Forbes however says no hard feelings we're past that but I did bring a game for all of us to play Forbes is apparently in tech and him and his team have been working on this new device that lets you swap bodies with somebody so your mind goes into somebody else's body and vice versa and so the friends are like all right let's try out this game right so they go for round one in which we see Shelby go into Brooke's body Reuben goes into Cyrus's body Maya goes into Nikki's body Cyrus goes into Reuben Forbes goes into Dennis and Dennis goes into four and then this causes a bit of a problem because we see that they can kind of get away with things here and there by not really revealing who they are now the whole thing about the game is to see who's in whose body right by the way they're acting so Forbes lies a little bit and doesn't say that he is actually in Dennis's body and this allows Cyrus who is in Reuben's body to sort of play a little bit if you will because up until this point we do know that Maya is in Nikki's body right and we find out that Cyrus does have a thing for Nikki and this is kind of a big thing in the relationship with Shelby and Cyrus right because Shelby kind of has has this fascination with Nikki and this sort of jealous of Nikki's success and how she's able to engage online while Cyrus has always crushed on Nikki throughout their college years and still today so it's kind of sets up Cyrus in a way to be able to go and pursue Nikki now that Maya's in her body without anybody knowing right and at the same time Maya still has feelings for Ruben who is getting married and Ruben does so as well for Maya so Maya's able to go forth and sort of try out things with Ruben's body so it creates this big messiness to it all. Eventually stop and then everybody wants to do round two except for Cyrus who thinks this is getting a little bit too weird and out of control because he also witnessed Shelby talking down upon him and everything about the relationship unbeknownst to Shelby that was actually Cyrus listening because of course Forbes tricked everybody so she thought it was just Forbes listening so kind of messy this whole thing's gonna be messy I don't know if I'm even making sense however they do go for round two in which we see Cyrus go into Forbes body Shelby goes into Nikki's Ruben goes into Dennis Nikki goes into Brooks Ruben goes into Dennis Dennis into Cyrus Maya into Shelby Forbes into Ruben and Brooke goes into Maya. Now we have a dilemma here because Shelby is now in Nikki's body and Nikki was who she's been like sort of like infatuated with. She wants to be Nikki and have her life and all of this, the attention that it comes with it. And we see that Ruben, who is now in Dennis's body, feels that maybe this is his last chance to really sort of go after Maya. And having Brooke in Maya's body, it seems that Brooke maybe have a thing for Ruben or Dennis. I'm not too quite sure. But both of them go up to the rooftop and have a makeout session. And this is where we see things start to really get out of control because we see 
Cyrus go and confront Shelby and say he doesn't want to play this game anymore. But then they have a makeout session as well because Shelby wants to sort of give Cyrus maybe what he wants and then deep down what she wants in being Nikki. And we see them just be like, you know what? This is just all so weird. And Cyrus says, we have to end this. But before they can get to the rest of the group, we see as Ruben and Brooke, who are in Dennis and Maya's body, fall off the rooftop and die. And now they have to figure out what the hell are we going to do? Because now we have have two bodies dead and two consciences dead so Dennis and Maya's bodies are gone now and now we have Brooke and Reuben dead as well and we haven't switched bodies right that's the thing that's happening here so Dennis who is in Cyrus's body starts to spiral because he doesn't know what's going to happen now so the group says what if Dennis just takes Reuben's body and Maya takes Brooke's body and that's it right that's all we have to do but it turns out that Forbes has something else in mind as he is in Reuben's body and decides to run off with the suitcase. And we see that Shelby is the only one who also knows how to run the machine. So they try to say, okay, if we get Forbes, will Shelby help us go back into our bodies? But she's like, no, I want to stay in Nikki's body. This creates an even bigger dilemma when Dennis and Cyrus go back and forth with one another. And we see that Dennis, who is inside Cyrus's body, calls the police and tells the police that it was him, Cyrus, who threw both Maya and also Dennis off of the roof. And then Dennis is like, okay, I'll go into my body and you go back into yours so you can go to jail. So a lot of things are happening here. But eventually what we see is characters double crossing one another as we see that Shelby, who is in Nikki's body, and Forbes, who is in Reuben's body, plot something where we can see that Shelby wants to stay in Nikki's body, and then Cyrus will go into Reuben's body, and they can start a whole new life together and run away, and everybody else is just screwed, right? So, Nikki, who is inside Brooke's body, finds out about this, and she gets pissed, and she tries to come up with a plan with Dennis, who is inside Cyrus's body, in order to pretty much not let this happen, and everybody else go into other the other bodies, but she gets to go into her body. Shelby tries to explain that she is not going to do anything funny, and that she's just going to do it as best for everybody to go into their bodies, but of course, Nikki, who is in Brooke's body, doesn't believe this, and smears Shelby, who is in her body, with some peanut butter, because she knows that she's allergic to peanut butter, and says, you have to switch me back into my body or else you're just gonna die in that body because I'm the only one who knows where the EpiPen is. All of this is happening and the police are at the door so they have to make a final body swap in which they do and then we see that the movie just ends until we get the coda where we get a bit more about what exactly is happening and it gets even more crazy. So we eventually see that Beatrice, who is Forbes' sister, come to the wedding after all of this. And it looks like the wedding's canceled, of course, because after all of that, of course, things were going to end badly. And we find out that this is not Beatrice. This is actually Forbes inside Beatrice's body. It turns out that Beatrice had actually done a body swap before the movie even started with Forbes when he went to visit her at the psych ward because she was pissed off of everything that happened that night and she wanted to get revenge. So when she knew that Forbes was going to the wedding party she was going to be the one that was going to come out to get revenge on everybody so the final body swap was maya went into brooke's body dennis went into forbes forbes went into Beatrice, of course as we know before the movie shelby went back into shelby's body and cyrus went back into cyrus's body nikki is now in reuben's body and beatrice is now in nikki's body and one thing to note here is that Prior to all of this, when Beatrice was still Forbes to everybody and Forbes had gone into Dennis's body, what they did was actually transfer all of the funds from Dennis's bank account into theirs. And now they pretty much have all that money too. And they're this big online social media influencer. So pretty much as you can tell, Beatrice had planned all of this from the beginning. There was going to always be something here that was going to be done because she wanted to get revenge on everybody for what happened to her that night. And we saw that this is how it ends. Cyrus, of course, went to jail because he was the one who called the police and said he killed those people. And Shelby was going to be the one to help him out. But Shelby pretty much just sees who Cyrus is as somebody of a liar who was just obsessed with Nikki, didn't really care for her. And she did a final test on Cyrus, thanks to Beatrice, who told her, why don't you say, hey, let's do all of this where I'll stay in Nikki's body and you can have Nikki now since that's what you've always wanted. And if he said yes, of course, he failed. And of course, Cyrus says okay let's do that and so that's what made Shelby realize that this is not the person she wants to be in and so she quickly just lets Cyrus stay in jail 
So I thought that that was a pretty interesting um, dilemma there. And you can really see why Beatrice did this because she was sort of feeling as Shelby did all those years ago where Dennis had been hooking up with her, but at the same time was with Nikki. So Beatrice kind of felt Shelby for a bit, right? So that's why she kind of helped her um, sort of come up with that plan to really test out Cyrus. And I think the whole premise and thesis of the movie really is said well by Brooke when she's showing off her art piece to the whole group. And she says, if you look at it normally, it's like this one thing, right? But then if you look at it through a colored lens, you see something different inside and I think that's such an important aspect of it that there's so many layers and ways that we see somebody on the outside but we don't really know who they are on the inside and all of these characters are sort of showing their cards by the end of the film compared to the characters that we meet at the beginning and you really see the true intentions and who they really are by the end of it all and I really did enjoy that aspect of the movie in itself I think it's an interesting movie as well just to watch with people uh, just have a fun time with it but at the same time it sort of has you thinking about our society and the way that technology and just everything about it has sort of morphed who we really are and sort of given us more of a shallow representation of ourselves and the world in the outside itself. Maybe I'm thinking too deep about it and maybe it's just a fun movie, but you let me know what you think. Anyways, as always, that's going to do it for me. Make sure you check out our other videos, our reviews and all of that. Yes, by the end, it was always Beatrice who was in Forbes' body from the beginning of the film. She had switched with him and went to the party to exact revenge, ultimately ending up in Nikki's body and is now this big social media influencer with a ton of money because she took Dennis's money and Nikki is stuck in Ruben's body. Cyrus is stuck in his own body in jail. Shelby is in her body, but she's free from it all, it seems. And Dennis is in Forbes' body now and Maya is in Brooke's body. Pretty much everybody except... Ruben and of course Brooke got left alive. I don't know if everybody else is happy besides Beatrice, but that's to see what's to come. So anyways, follow us on our social medias on Culture Elixir at TikTok as well as the Culture Elixir on Instagram and also our website www.culturelixir.com. I'll see all of you next time. Salem's Lot video today as well as Joker for Let Do. And as always, stay safe, stay positive.